Hi everyone. Hope you're working hard at home. Now before we start with today's lesson, I just want to check in with you and make sure that you've watched the YouTube video that I sent you yesterday. If you haven't checked it out yet, please do so now. It's a four to five minute song on the different types of rock. Now the song is important because it kind of paves the way to what we'll be dealing with in the following two chapters. So let's get started. Only if you've watched the video. The first thing we're going to look at is the classification of rocks. Now, if you've watched the video, you will know that there are three different types of rock. The three different types that we get are igneous, metamorphic, and sedimentary rocks. By the end of the following two videos, I'll give you a bit of work to do. And one of the things that you'll have to do is create a rock cycle some, uh, similar to this one. But I'll explain it in more detail a bit later on. So let's take a look at the first type of rock. Now the first type of rock we'll be dealing with is an igneous rock. Igneous just simply means fire or really, really hot. And the idea is that igneous rocks come from magma when it's beneath the surface of the earth or lava which flows out onto the surface of the earth. So this would be called lava when it's outside and magma when it's still beneath the surface of the earth. Okay, when we deal with igneous rocks or when we deal with magma and lava, we form igneous rocks as soon as the magma and or the lava cools down. Now, when my lava cools down, I form an extrusive igneous rock. Extrusive coming from the idea of exit or outside. So an extrusive igneous rock is a rock that is formed outside. In other words, it's a rock that forms from the lava. And the rock that we have here is called a basalt. Now I've got a nice little specimen over here of a basalt. So this is what a basalt looks like. It's very dark in color. It's quite heavy as well. And you can't really see crystals. You see glittery pieces that look like they might be crystals but it's actually just one big, massive chunk of rock. Okay, so all igneous rocks are massive. Massive just coming from the idea that as soon as you find them, you find them in big boulders. So it won't be small little fragments everywhere. It'll be big chunks of rock. This one has, however, been weathered and eroded. That's why I have a small specimen. Okay, so that's the extrusive igneous rock. The next type of igneous rock we'll be looking at is what we call intrusive. Intrusive, just simply coming from the idea that it is inside Earth still. Now, with an extrusive igneous rock, my temperature plays a big role. So, inside the Earth, Earth or below the crust of the Earth, my rocks are still molten. That means it's really, really, really hot. And because it's below the crust, it kind of stays hot for quite some time. But as soon as it flows out, as soon as I have an extrusive igneous rock, as soon as my lava flows out onto the surface, surface it cools really, really rapidly. And because of this rapid cooling, I have the very massive texture and I can't identify the individual crystals. However, coming back to my intrusive igneous rocks, which form inside the crust of the earth, my cooling rate is a lot slower. So it cools down more slowly. And because it cools down more slowly, I can actually form proper crystals. So here, We've got a dolerite. Dolerite looks very similar to the basalt, and it's an equivalent to the basalt. The only difference is the basalt is extrusive, so it cools down really quickly, so you can't see your crystals that clearly. Whereas a dolerite, which is the specimen I have in my hand, cools on the inside. It's an intrusive igneous rock, so I have better crystals, and I can see my crystals more clearly. Let's take a closer look at some of these crystals. Let's just try and get my focus right. Okay. So over here, we've got what looks like a greenish crystal. That greenish crystal is called an olivine. So it comes from the idea of a green olive, where it has a similar color to the green olive. 
and therefore this mineral is called olivine. These black crystals that you see in between, these are called pyroxenes. So those dark little crystals over there. So this is a crystalline texture because you can actually see the different crystals. And this is what a dolerite looks like. Again, it's part of a massive body of an igneous rock, but this was also weathered and eroded from it. It's got quite a nice round shape, but very heavy. And the last type of igneous rock that we'll be looking at is also an intrusive igneous rock, which means it also formed inside, um, is what we call a granite. Now I want you to notice something. A real granite, like this one in my hand right now, has got more of a pink color and I'm going to dip it in water so the color is more um, evident. So there we go. It's got more of a pink, almost red color. Now this is a real granite. Again, it's crystalline because you can see individual and different crystals. We've got a quartz crystal over there. We've got a feldspar crystal over there. We've got some more feldspar crystals right over there. It's a bit of pyroxene crystals, as you can see, the small black ones, but very, very few. So this is quite a light colored igneous rock. This is a real granite. When you put it in tabletops, they'll refer to this as a black granite or a dark granite, but this is in actual fact a dolerite. Remember the difference. Okay, that was igneous rocks. I hope that makes sense, and I hope you've read through the chapters so that it's becoming more clear to you now. Um, igneous rocks, like I said, they're very heavy. They're also quite hard. That's why it's nice to use them for things such as countertops, tombstones, or even to pave roads. It's weather, um, quite weather resistant, and it's quite durable. It's very hard and very solid. Moving on to the next type of rock we'll be looking at is a sedimentary rock. Now sedimentary rocks form when my igneous or metamorphic rocks, let me just clarify that. Okay, so sedimentary rocks form from igneous or metamorphic rocks that weather, erode, and eventually deposit small particles. These particles are then compacted to form a rock, so they need pressure to form it. The first type of sedimentary rock we'll be looking at is a sandstone. Here we go. So here we've got a sandstone. You can actually see the grains of sand. And if you listen closely, you can hear some of the grains of sand drop. So it's got a very rough texture. It consists of sand and therefore, oh wow, it just broke. A bit of it broke. And therefore it's called a sandstone. Okay, pretty clear, pretty obvious I mean. The next type of sedimentary rock we'll be looking at is what we call a shale. So it's a lot like the sandstone in that it contains fine grains or sediments that are compacted together. But the biggest difference here, two differences at least, is that first of all, my grains are really, really fine. You almost can't see them. Or you can only just identify them. And the second thing that you can notice, clearly notice and see from this shale, which we couldn't see that clearly from my piece of sandstone. So there was my sandstone and this is my shale. So the sandstone coarser grained shale very fine grained sandstone has got no layers do you see the layers here different colors as well to make it easy my sandstone does not show that okay now these layers are referred to as bedding planes okay and if you drop this rock which i did accidentally it'll typically break along one of these bedding planes and in there, you can clearly see that it is very fine grained, but still a sedimentary rock nonetheless. The last type of sedimentary rock, well not the, the second last sedimentary rock we'll look at, is what we call a conglomerate. So a conglomerate contains small pebbles, as you can see, 
over there and there and there and you can clearly see these pebbles but these pebbles are surrounded by what looks like sand so this is a conglomerate it contains pebbles of other rocks along with sand in between now the sand in between is called a matrix so it consists of a matrix of sand and small pebbles and this is a conglomerate Okay, the three rocks that we just looked at, the sandstone, the shale, and the conglomerate, are all mechanically formed sedimentary rocks. In other words, they need weathering and erosion of other rocks, of my igneous rocks, and of my metamorphic rocks. So when my igneous and metamorphic rocks weather, erode, and deposit small particles, they form sedimentary rocks or mechanically formed sedimentary rocks. Um, the next type of sedimentary rocks that we'll look at are organically formed sedimentary rocks. Now, for organic sedimentary rocks, we need organic material. In other words, either plants or animal remains. Here's a good example of one. This is a small piece of coal. Unfortunately, the mine I worked at back then wouldn't allow me to take a bigger sample or specimen. So I only have this really small specimen of coal. And the other organic uh, sedimentary rock that we get is called a limestone. I don't have an example of a limestone. They're quite fragile, they crumb and break easily. And if you pour vinegar on them, they actually dissolve. So it's a pretty cool experiment if you can find limestone. Good, I hope you're still with me. Now the last type of rock we're going to look at, so we've covered igneous rocks, we've covered sedimentary rocks, now we're moving on to the last type of rock, which is our metamorphic rocks. So metamorphic rocks basically just form either from my igneous rock or from my sedimentary rock, but for a metamorphic rock to form, I need a high amount of pressure and quite a, a great amount of heat. If we look at, what are we gonna use? Let's use the shale. So this was my sedimentary rock, very fine grained sedimentary rock in which you can see clear bedding planes. Now if I were to place this rock under an immense amount of pressure and heat, in other words, it would get buried very deep beneath the surface of the earth, the temperature and pressure that it is exposed to will change the structure of the minerals and the structure of the rock and we will end up with a slate. So a slate is a metamorphic rock. You can still see that it looks like it's almost got the layers, but it didn't quite preserve those bedding planes. It looks a bit like it. And it's still very, very fine grained. The only difference now, and I hope you can see it, is that it's got a bit more of a crystal structure. So it's like there's almost crystals but not quite so this is a metamorphic rock and this is the metamorphic equivalent the slate is the metamorphic equivalent of a shale so here we go here we've got our shale again i don't know if you can see the really fine pieces of sediments in there so you can actually see small grains that's why this is a sedimentary rock this Slate is a metamorphic rock, so it's very hard, almost sounds like glass, very solid, and it's got more of a crystalline appearance, so you see crystals instead of grains like you did with this the shell. Okay, that was the first metamorphic rock example that I have. The second metamorphic example that I have, metamorphic rock example that I have, is when I take a sandstone, such as this one. Remember the sandstone partner? very rough textured pieces of sand falling out. Now if I take this sandstone, I place it under immense pressure and heat, it will eventually transform into a quartzite. Crazy to think that this sandstone will turn into a quartzite, but it does. So when the sedimentary rock the sandstone is placed under high pressure and um, high heat 
that will metamorphose into a quartzite. More we go. So those are the three different types of rock that we get. And I've given you a few examples of each. I hope you've learned something.